Hello interwebs and welcome to my RetroArch and M3U files tutorial video. M3U files are used by <coughs> some libretro cores to help manage swapping disks in multi-disk games as well as to ensure that the in-game saves are shared easily across the disks. For example, the Beetle cores for PS1 and uh, Saturn as well as the Vice Commodore 64 core can utilize them. And I'm doing this because I've seen a lot of people struggling with getting them to work properly and I thought a video would be a better and more efficient way to explain and illustrate their use than a wall of text and also gets around language barriers more easily. So uh, to begin with here on the left you can see uh, I have a list of M3U files of PS1 games. We'll use those as an example. On the right I have my uh, dumped image files of uh, PS1 games as well. So <coughs> first off, on Windows at least, you want to make sure that you can see your file extensions. If you don't, um, M3U extension is one that Windows will hide from you. So on Windows 10, you can go on top menu to view and there you have a checkbox called file name extensions. Make sure you have a check mark there. That will enable you to see file name extensions to make sure that the extension for the file you create will actually be the M3U. On older Windowses like 7, if you still use them, um, you can Google to find uh, how to find that option. Uh, I can't remember the exact way anymore since it's been a while since I used since I've used Windows 7. But it's in a file and folder options somewhere, if I remember correctly. Anyway, uh, first things first, you want to create a new simple plain text document. It doesn't have to be at all the same name as for example your image file that you're putting for the title in question. Um, the key point here is that this name will be used by RetroArch to create the save game which of course so it will link to the uh, correct M3U file so it will be shared across the disks in the M3U file. Uh, because uh, then uh, when you're done creating the M3U file, that is how you will load the content. If you load content manually through a RetroArch load content menu after loading a core, you will uh, find and choose the M3U file you created, or if you, as I recommend, uh, scan playlists, you'll want to scan the M3U files into the playlist, not your actual image files. So let's say there was a uh, Europe only special edition of Metal Gear Solid that I've acquired and want to now play after I've dumped it. Uh, let's say I used the typical naming scheme of Metal Gear Solid Special Edition Europe. And the key point here is that you change the TXT extension to M3U. Yes, we want to change. Then we open it. Uh, I'm using Notepad++. If you're not familiar with it, it displays uh, the line number here on the left side, ignore that. Do not add any line numbers or anything extra onto the M3U file. Simply the path and file name of the disk images that you want to associate into this title. Uh, the path can be absolute or relative. I myself prefer a relative, but you can use whichever you prefer. If you don't know the difference, go with absolute, which is basically the full path. So, for example, if you have your image files folder open here, you can just click on the address bar in Windows 10 for example, copy the whole path here, let's say I do that, and then put the backslash after the path, and then just a file name, let's say in this case the dump is MGS1 very special disk 1.q. And this is, uh, by the way, another key point with, uh, for example, the Q bin file format that is recommended for the PS1 games as well as Saturn games, uh, make sure you add the Q files into the M3U, not the bin files. You want the Q files to be pointed at. Then let's copy that for disk 2. Let's say the special edition is actually three disks, lots more extra content. So this would then, when you load this into RetroArch, it would try to find load up or prepare the images from these locations under these very names. And uh, also another key point is to uh, make sure you list them in sending order. 
starting from disk one going up because they will be indexed in the order they are in the m3u file so if you reverse the order then whenever retroarch says um like a disk one uh, has been set in the drive that would mean disk three if that was the first on the file so make sure you set them in ascending order starting from disk one and or well that probably isn't zero but you could name it anyway regardless uh <laughs> i digress i can close that then before you uh, load that content i recommend that in retroarch to make your life a lot easier you go to settings um, input and hotkey binds and from there you find disk eject toggle disk next and disk previous the disk next and previous are pretty self-explanatory and the disk eject toggle is basically your tray cycle hotkey if the tray or drive is closed this will open it and if it's open this will close it this will uh, get you around having to hop back and forth in menus to let the game or the emulator rather know in between cycle traying that a tray change a tray state has changed before you try to uh, change the loaded disk image so i recommend you set up these three hotkeys after that you go into the game you load your content through the m3u file now here uh, with metal gear solid i have a disk 2 loaded into the drive so when i go and try to start a new game the game will naturally notice that there's uh, disk 1 is not in the drive so it can't start the opening cutscene of the game so it asks you to insert this one now i press the uh, disk eject toggle and in lower left corner retroarch will notify me that the virtual tray is now open so now i can proceed to switch the image with whichever you want so here you can see the index numbers now that there's one and two of two because there's two disks only you change to the disk you want and after that you again press the disk eject toggle and it will now notify you that the virtual disk tray is now closed and the disk that you last chose there before closing the tray is now loaded into the emulator basically so now as we press start the game should proceed as it checks to see disk one in the drive as it does and it now proceeds to start the new game so there it's um pretty straightforward process once you get the hang of it and i hope if um, you had problems with this this has helped you if there's anything else that uh, you have trouble with or beat m3u files or retroarch in general let me know in the comments i'll see if i can further clarify or help with additional um, videos But until then, happy gaming and have a good one.